In today's session, we are going to uh, talk about a useful troubleshooting techniques on the bench. Okay, we haven't um, talked about troubleshooting techniques for a while, uh, so this is a hopefully this is a, a refresh compared to uh, our previous episodes. Just a very quick introduction about the DUT device on the test. In this case, it's an automotive PCB. I covered uh, the uh, confidential and sensitive part of the PCB. As you can see, it's connected to two um, automotive lizards and it's a low voltage product, so 12 volts. I'm troubleshooting use a RF current probe just to measure the common mode current, okay? And uh, you can see I'm actually not using a spectral analyzer as we often do, but in this case, I'm using an oscilloscope. And of course, uh, when you are using a RF current probe or near field probe, such as this one, you need to connect to the 50 ohm uh, input impedance of the spectral analyzer. So we have said that uh, so many times. And you may wonder why in this case we are using a oscilloscope. Well, you can see that currently we have two channels enabled. Channel 1 is connected to the RF current probe, so that measures the common mode current flowing through both the 12 volts and 0 volts wire. And I also have another channel, which is channel 2, that is connected to a small loop, magnetic field loop, right? So, because the challenge we're often facing is that on a typical PCB, you could have three or five or seven noise sources and you wonder which noise source contributes to the particular noise that we are trying to deal with in the uh, uh, conducting emission. And this technique enables you to trace and track the noise because it's in time domain. So you can actually compare whatever measures using the small field loop to the waveform you measured with uh, uh, RF current probes so that you know which noise source contributes to which contents, okay? That sounds pretty straightforward and easy. However, in reality, when you troubleshoot a circuit, you will face something unexpected. So let's first demonstrate that, okay? So I'm going to turn on the unit, okay? So the unit is turned on, the, the fan starts spin. You can see that we started to see a high frequency common mode current, okay? So each spike, and if you look, you measure the frequency, you can see here is about one meg or two megahertz. That's perhaps related to some switching frequency on the PCB. If I zoom in, you will see that actually behind it, you have much higher frequency content. So for example, this bit represents the ringing. That is a much higher frequency content, and that's often the common mode noise that we're trying to deal with. Okay, so as I said, we could um, use this method to trace and track the noise source, right? So for example, I can put in here, right? But did you see what happened there, right? So look, the benefit of using a near-field magnetic uh, field probe is that it is actually an isolated measurement. Why is it isolated? I mean, there's no direct contact between the, 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 the probes you're using to the circuit, right? And often we say that is really good because in this kind of high speed uh, PCB, the least thing you would like to do is to use a probe, then you use a uh, passive probes. Because passive probes, the moment you probe the circuit, that introduce what we call loading, right? So the, the, the probe itself start to load the circuit and cause problems. Okay, so yeah, just quick demonstrate of the loading that could happen when you're using a you know 10 to 1 passive probe such as this. Okay, so this passive probe comes with the uh, oscilloscope. And look, this is a ground point, okay? So this this part here, this uh, this one here is a ground. And look, I'm not even measuring any signal, but just touch the ground lead of the probe to here, you can see that the circuit, the common mode current measured on the screen is completely changed, right? I'm not even measuring it. So just touching the ground. So you can see the, uh, the problem when you're making a, a contact measurement using a uh, passive probe, you could always introduce uh, noise uh, by this uh, loading phenomenon. Okay. And in this case, we are not uh, having a direct contact between the probes and the PCB, therefore the, the loading is minimized. But look, look, 
I'm not even touching the circuit, but you can see the current which are measured using this RF current flow start to increase. You see, the moment I get close to a circuit, you see, and the situation can good, could get really worse. For example, in this case, right? You see, I'm just moving it, and this current increased by five times or even ten times, right? And this is a little bit misleading because you could forget about this original waveform you measured using the RF current probe and really believe that's the noise level you measure. But in, act in reality, this is caused by the capacitive loading between my body or any object like a probe to the PCB. I can demonstrate that simply by not using the probe and just using my hand. And look, I'm not even touching the circuit. As my finger gets close to the PCB, I started to load the circuit. You see that? You see that? I'm not touching it. It, it can really make things worse if I just touch it. Look, this is when I touch the PCB, right? And it has nothing to do with whether this ground plane is, uh, is properly earthed or grounded. It's, the situation is always there. For example, I can touch my fingers on this ground and I can still introduce the same noise, right? So I could, if I had a way of floating myself like in the air and I do this and I still introduce uh, the noise. And this is a phenomenon, what we call near-field coupling between your body, or in this case, your probe, to the PCB you are, uh, uh, you are trying to diagnose, right? And this near-field uh, uh, coupling could have two mechanisms. One is what we call magnetic field coupling. The other one is called electric field coupling. And in this case, it's more electric field coupling than magnetic field coupling because of the nature of the circuit. But you may also wonder, like, yeah, but I thought these probes are shielded probes, right? Shielded magnetic field probes. So in theory, they only measure magnetic field. No electric field coupling can happen. But in reality, you know, because of the very complexity of the, the field in this circuit, you will still have electric field loading, okay? So to further demonstrate that, I'll show you in something in detail, okay? So now I get rid of my magnetic field probes. Now I connect my electric field probe tips. So this essentially is a capacitor here, okay? So now you see, if I get the tip very close to the pad, you can see here is the pad, and that's where the inductor is connected. And by the way, this is a step-down converter, so there's a huge current going through this uh, inductor, and this is a shielded inductor. But you know, when you shield a field by using a shielded inductor, if you have a pad which is larger and it's not really uh, sitting underneath the shield, what you have is essentially this pad is not shielded, right? So for example, if I got my uh, tip close to here, you can see from the, the waveform measure there that I still measure lots of uh, noise. And this is a electric field uh, coupling, basically. And I can even touch it, and then you can see this is really the worst case scenario, where the pad itself having an electric field coupling to, to, uh, to the probe tip. You see that? And I can also, of course, I load, now I start to, if I touch it, I start to load the circuit, right? Uh, touch it, I load the circuit a lot more. Okay, so this is on this side of the uh, switch mode power supply. I can also show you there's another switch mode power supply here, tiny one. They also had a, a pad, perhaps you can't see clearly, but there's a pad there which is not really covered by the shield. And it's the same principle. So you, you can see I get it here. You see, I'm not even touching it. I start to having uh, I, my tip probe start to measure the electric fields, uh, uh, well, sort of like uh, radiated. You can see in a sense that uh, out of this pad, I can of course touch it, then this coupling is um, uh, maximized. Okay, so that's an interesting demo. Basically, we want to demonstrate two things. One is this, this is a useful troubleshooting technique that you can definitely set it up on your bench and just um, move your probes. Uh, better to use a magnetic field probe because you want to measure the current and this is a, a magnetic field probe as well. So better to start with a magnetic field probe and then just move the probe on your circuit. And if you, know, if you see noise level, then you can see this one contribute to certain level of the overall noise you measure, then you can trace the noise source one by one. But also another important lesson learned in this case is that even using something like a magnetic field probe, which in theory shouldn't load your theory, 
but in reality, it could load your circuit. It could load your circuit as we demonstrate here. So hopefully this uh, small session is interesting to you. And um, if you really want to learn more uh, of benchtop troubleshooting, I would highly recommend attend Mr. Ken Wyatt's uh, sessions um, in person. So this is in May in Newbury in the UK. So if you're based in the UK or in Europe, you may want to uh, attend his training session where he will talk a lot about uh, uh, test methods such as this. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much.